Hey everyone, in today's Adobe Premiere video, I want to show you how to work with an image and bring it into your video and your timeline in Adobe Premiere. Now we'll start with a completely blank timeline so I could show you kind of the fundamentals of working with pictures. And then we'll go to a video sequence that has video and audio and I'll show you how to kind of overlay an image on top of an existing video. So with a blank sequence here, I need to first bring in my image into this project. So to do that, I could double click over here in the blank area of my project bin here. And I could go ahead and find that image. In this case, I just had it on the desktop, so I could go ahead and select it. And I usually get my images from Shutterstock, and I got this free one from pixels.com. For more commercial work, I use shutterstock.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description so you could check that out. I'll go ahead and press import. And to bring my photo right here that I have on this side onto my timeline where I could edit it, I could just go ahead and grab it and bring it onto one of the video tracks. I'll just put it on video track one. That's just this first video track. And here's a lot of times the problem with working with image. The image is far bigger than the video track that I've created. I've created a 1080p video track here, but you can see this image is actually being zoomed into a lot. So what if I want this image in the actual size that it is? Well, there is an easy option on top. If you come up here, to the clip menu and you come down here to video option and set to frame size right here. Select that and it basically takes your image and sets it to frame size. In this case, this is a vertical image. So I'm going to have part of my video be black on the right and the left sides. But if this was horizontal, it would do a better job filling in. But if I change my mind and if I do want to scale this, all I have to do is select this so it's highlighted and come to the effects control over here. And I could use this scale attribute. You see this line that says scale. If you grab it here and go up, it will change it to be bigger. And if I go down, it will make it smaller. So in this case, let me make it as big as my image so I don't have anything black on either side. So that's at 100%. And I could use the position slider here to bring it down with the option on the right. And I could bring it left and right with this option if I wanted to. In this case, I don't want to because it's actually the right size for that. But I did want to bring it down to this size. So that's how you add an image to a sequence and scale it and move it left and right. But what about when you want to put it on top of an existing video? Let me open a different sequence. I'll double click a different sequence to open. And let's say I want to work with this sequence instead. So again, I have a video track one, video track two. If you don't have a video track two, you could go ahead and right click or control click and add a track. You could add multiple tracks using this option. But if you add a track, it's going to basically put another video track on top. If you do it in the audio section, it's going to add an audio track on the bottom. So that's how you would add a track. In the case of adding a photo on top of this existing video, let's say I wanted to put a photo on top of this video clip right here. I would have to have a video track too. So that's how you would create that. And then you could go ahead and grab your image here on the left and put it on top here on video track two. Now, Again, it's going to be too big, so it's actually going to hide my video. So I could select it again, and I could go ahead and scale it down again with the scale attribute under effects control. So I'll go ahead and make it smaller. And now I could see my video underneath it, and I could basically, let's say, bring it to this corner if I wanted to just put it over here. Again, just using these sliders to make a different size and then move it around. If I go in the beginning of this clip and I press play, the video is playing and the image is on top of it. You could actually use the attributes on the motion tab again here to do the, the reverse of it as well. So you can make the video smaller and then the image could be the size in the background. You would have to change the placement of these. So you would have to bring the video track on top of the image right here and then make the video track smaller here. So that's how you would kind of work with them if you wanted to do picture in picture or video in video. These are the three different sliders that you would move around. And the most visible track will be whatever track is on the top. So in this case, I'll put the video on video three, this track. So this is the most visible layer. So if it was a full size, you wouldn't see the image behind it. And then this would make it smaller. And then the same thing if I brought it on the bottom on track one and the image was on track two, if the image was bigger, 
it would hide the video under it. So that's how you kind of work with them on top of each other. And if I wanted to make this image the exact same size, the exact same length as this video clip under it, I just have to grab the end of this image and bring it and snap it right here. And now I do the same thing on the in point of it. So the in point and the out point are snapped and to this video. And let me go back to the blank track to show you one more thing. When you drop an image on a sequence, it makes a five seconds by default. So if you were making a slideshow, for example, this is gonna play for exactly five seconds, which tends to be a good length in my opinion on most cases, but you could always go ahead and grab it and make it as long as you want here. These could be 10 seconds or a minute or however long you want this image to go. So if it was a background, for example, you can make it five minutes so if I just go ahead and make this five minutes just like that, this image will play for five minutes and I could play the smaller video clips on top of it or other images on top of it. And you have some options in the preferences on PC, it's under the edit menu, on Mac it's under the Premiere Pro video and go to preferences. And there's an option here called timeline right here. Select the timeline option under preferences. And there's an option called still image default duration. By default is five seconds. So if you don't want it to be five seconds, if you want it to be three seconds, for example, you could do that. And whatever number you want, you could also set it by frames and not by seconds. And whatever you set this to and press OK, the next time you launch Premiere, that's going to be your default duration for an image that you put on a timeline. And that's the gist of working with images inside of Adobe Premiere. I'll put more resources in the description below this video so you can learn all about Adobe Premiere. And I hope to see you on the next video. Please give this one a thumbs up and thanks for watching.